Hi everyone. <clears throat> the sound is okay. Yes, everybody listens. Okay. My name is Andres, and this is a brief introduction of myself. It's not really interesting, so I will skip it. But the important thing is, we here we are to talk about Wi-Fi fingerprinting. Okay. We want to fingerprint devices. So this is the first part of a pen test or to seek for a target. So I think it's really important. And it's also important as, as we are defending our network to understand what we are exposing to the air. Because we used to think that networks or Wi-Fi networks was an access point and some devices connecting to it. But nowadays, the protocol has changed and it's quite difficult to know the boundaries of a network. And also, it's an interesting way of how to bypass mac randomization that is something vendors are implementing to protect a user from being tracked. But in some cases, this is not working as expected. So I will show some of, some example of this. So also an, an important thing I want to focus in is explaining that if we are connected to an open network and our traffic is not encrypted, it's quite easy to fingerprint a device because we can see DNA, uh, DNS uh, traffic, we can see HTTP traffic, and we can see a lot of traffic that is not encrypted. So it's quite easy to identify and fingerprint a device. Like if you grab the user agent from HTTP traffic, you can get the OS and other stuff on, on a computer. So it's quite easy. But if you are connected to a secure network, you are almost not leaking any traffic. Or let's say you have a device that is connected to, is not connected to a network. How I can I fingerprint a device that is not connected? So we are going to focus on management frames only, and in some of those management subtypes in specific. So I'm going to talk about some specific protocols or extensions on Wi-Fi. The first one is WPS, that is called Wi-Fi Protected Setup. It has some vulnerabilities in the past, but here we are going to focus only on fingerprinting devices. So I don't know if this is the best screenshot I can get because it's not really clear. But this is an access point. And as we can see here, the access point is leaking the model, the version, the, the vendor. It's giving a lot of information in the pre-response frame. So this is leaked every time an access point is queried with a pre-request pre frame. It will reply with this. And you will get a lot of information on the target. And maybe if you get the the model or, or a specific uh, version, you can know that it's vulnerable and then you can target it for an exploit or something else. I'm gonna go really quick because it's only 20 minutes and then if there's a question, please uh, ask me uh, after the talk. So I, I can answer everything you want and I can do also a live demo afterwards also. Uh, this is CCX that if you have worked with uh, Cisco Ironet, this is an extension that it was used by default on most uh, uh, Cisco Ironet networks. And this is a, 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 a portion of a text in the manual. And it's really, it's, really, it's really great for us because it says that Cisco Ironet, it sends an information element on the beacon frame that as we all know, the beacon frame is sent every single time in the air. And the information element that is a portion of the beacon frame the, the tag that is with uh, the number 85 in hex contains the access point name that is internal for the, the, the network administration, the load of the access point, the number of associating clients, and so on. I'm not sure what so on is, but apparently it's also giving more information. And then it also says that if someone is like doing roaming, moving from one access point to another in the same network, and it says, and it sends an association request uh, with this tag. The access point is going to reply you with an access, uh, a association response frame with the tag 89 and uh, 89, 80, sorry, 85 and 90 and 95, and this can contain the controller IP address. So now your access point is given to anyone that is looking around the IP address of the controller inside the network. So again, sorry about the, I don't know, someone could read that or no, sorry. I could show it afterwards. Uh, in this case, this is a, a beacon frame and we see the information element 
and we see the, the name and the number of clients that is uh, that access point in particular has uh, connected to him. Again, the, the, the name of the access point I think is really useful because when you're going around and doing word driving, sometimes the, the, the administrators of the network they find the, the, the access point name such as uh, IT access point or second floor access point. And you can get like an idea where the access point is, in fact, without GPS also. So it's a, it's a, it's a really good information to make context of what, what you're dealing with. Then Wi-Fi Direct, that is another, is another like extension. It was designed by Wi-Fi Alliance. And it's, it's designed so we can connect directly without needing to have an access point. So if someone wants to share with my phone something, I can connect phone to phone without having an access point. Uh, this one also gives a lot of information. In this case, most uh, devices supporting this are Android mobile devices, uh, TVs, printers. There are a lot of devices that support this. Uh, Windows, uh, Windows desktop machines support it. So you get a lot of information. In this case, we can get the name and the model of a TV that has this uh, support for this, for this protocol. The important thing here to understand is that Wi-Fi Direct needs an, act, uh, an active scan. It doesn't work if you are doing passive recognition. So it needs you to send some frames to get this information. But again, this information can be get by anyone. Then. Then we have HP. HP, HP had decided to, to, besides supporting Wi-Fi Direct on most printer, scanners, and office devices that they, they, they design, they also added like a custom information element that they are sending through the air that has like the serial number of the printer, the IP address that the printer has where it's connected to. Again, Wi-Fi Direct needs, uh, it's a protocol that can be used to connect directly to the printer, but if your printer is connected to a wireless network and you connect with Wi-Fi Direct to the printer, it could be used as a bridge, okay, to connect to the, the network it's connected to. And let's say you are not using Wi-Fi with a printer because you say that it's insecure and you only use an uh, Ethernet cable, but you don't disable the Wi-Fi Direct that again is by default on the printer, your printer, can be a bridge to your wire network. So again, wireless is not only about access points. You can have devices that support wireless that could be act could be acting as an, an access point or as a bridge to a network. Uh, this uh, this information element is not processed by Wireshark, but I I'm really I released a tool that you can get all the information from this information element, and I explain how how you can reverse it or 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 parse it. Then we have this one that lately has a lot of like people looking into it. It's the Apple Wireless Direct Link. It's used by AirPlay and AirDrop. So if you have an, an Apple device and you have Wi-Fi and Bluetooth uh, on, your device is gonna be sending a lot of information into the air. So if, the, if you have a friend nearby and you can share some information. Uh, this one has something really, really interesting because this hasn't been fixed uh, in a lot of time. I, I, I've been speaking about this, I think, a couple of years. And it's like Apple is always saying that it's protecting the users and they are trying to do mag randomization, for example, so you cannot be tracked in a conference or any place you are. But there you, I don't know if it, it can be read because it's a little bit small, but it says the transmitting address or the source address is the random MAC so you cannot be tracked. But in this action frame that is not encrypted and it's sent for anyone to read, inside the frame it says device ID and there is the real Mac. So you create Mac randomization, you add this feature and you broke it. Like, doesn't work. And it's not, in this case in particular it's for AirPlay and it's affecting Apple TVs, but as you can see here, this is an iPhone, and iPhone is doing, mm, with their drop, it's doing almost the same. So it's sending your, your device name into the air. So if you have a particular, is like your name, like Andres iPhone, it's gonna say Andres iPhone with all the random Macs, so I can continue looking into it, and I continue tracking you. 
and knowing all your random max that you have leaked into there. So again, ran Mac randomization with Apple AirDrop or AirPlay is not working uh, as expected. So let me see how I'm doing with the time. Okay, I'm, I'm good. As far as, uh, as here, any question? Any brief question I could, I could respond? No? The, the, uh, the Wi-Fi Direct, Wi-Fi Direct ha is active. These are passive, but if you want to force it, maybe you need to uh, to do something active. The 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 Apple the, the Apple protocol requires to send some uh, uh, Bluetooth BLE beacons to be activated. So if you have another device nearby, it's gonna be activated. But if you don't have a device, you need to force it. But the CCX is, is, is passive, yes. You can do something active, but I can tell you the, the afterwards, uh, it's sort of a vulnerability, more or less. I, I will explain it later. So how, how you can find this stuff and understand what is going on and look into this, this, this as custom uh, protocols. So there's a lot of them, okay? So this is only, are only some of them that I look, but I'm looking to more. Uh, more of them, and there's a lot, a lot. Vendors are like extending the protocol and leaking a lot of information into there. On management frames, they are not encrypted, and they cannot be encrypted because it's the way the protocol works. So there's no fix for this. So we have three, three different way, uh, places where we can look for these protocols. We can look in firmwares, for example, printers, embedded devices that they support Wi-Fi. We can see on the kernel, usually I'm gonna show two examples of kernels, but usually Linux kernel, uh, a kernel module or a kernel extension on macOS, uh, also on Windows. Uh, I haven't looked into Windows once, but I think that they are not so difficult neither. And then you have user land applications that I will show one that the HP case that is the more interesting. Sorry. So this is quite difficult to read again, but in this case, I'm looking to, into the IO802.11 family uh, kernel extension. That again, this is a, a module that is placed, uh, it's, you can be finding on iOS devices or MacOS, and it's almost the same on the iOS and on the, on the MacOS. So if you want to reverse it, you need a Mac, and you don't need an iPhone. Let's say you, you are looking into, into iOS, and you want to look into an iPhone, but you don't, you don't have a, a jailbroken device, so you can look into the macOS, that the kernel station is there, you can grab it with uh, root privileges, and then you can reverse it, and it's almost the same. So if I wanted to, want to look into this, it's easier to look it on macOS than on iPhone, unless you have a, a jailbroken device. But this is a function on a particular class that is called 802.11 AWDL Peer Manager, that is doing all the direct link stuff, and all the functions, they are dealing with the parsing and other stuff. There have been some, some vulnerabilities also reported here. Uh, you can look in the web, there, there's some stuff there. Uh, I think there are more vulnerabilities. Uh, I have some ideas, maybe I, I'm gonna share it in the future. Then this is a host APD, as some of you could maybe know, the host APD is a user land application that does a lot of parsing on the on the 802.11 protocol on Wi-Fi, mostly on routers, Android, Linux devices, and again, uh, because we have a specific license on on the host APD, a lot of vendors extend the protocol, modifying the host APD and adding the specific features. It doesn't. It's really, really, really tiny here, but here it says Air Ties. Air Ties. It looks like a vendor that is giving some mesh information into the air. I, be, I, uh, I recently started reversing this, this driver, so I'm, I don't have more information. But this is just to show you that there's a lot of information we can process just re reversing some drivers or firmware. And this last one is the, let me check my time, okay. And this last one is the uh, HP1, that is the, it's, 
it's, it's weird because I never find something on, on Java, like to, to on Wi-Fi, like with Java. But in this case, is this, this application for HTTP only works on Android devices. So if you have an Android device and you have the HP application to connect to a printer and, and print directly from your phone, you have this application that will ask and the, the OS, to, the Android OS, to give the all the beacon and the proof response frames and the Wi-Fi direct frames that they are proof response but with little modifications. And then it's going to parse the header on the Java application. So if you find something wrong in the Java application, I don't say it has something wrong, but if you find something wrong, you can maybe attack the application directly. With Wi-Fi frames, you are attacking directly the application. In this case, I, I, I decompiled some code and I was able to reverse the protocol uh, HP printers were, were like customizing. Uh, uh, they give a lot of information. It's amazing they send this in a management frame. So future work. There's a lot of things uh, anyone can grab and look into it. There's a protocol that, uh, there's WPS has something called vendor and application extensions that I, I when I was driving, I look, uh, I, I found a lot of devices that they are leaking information. There's also the Wi-Fi direct disco uh, service discovery that again is something useful because you can ask the device what type of service they are providing. So again, you can fingerprint based on the service that they are providing. Uh, remember that this is everything is without authentication. Okay, the device is there, and you, you talk through them. To you talk to them, no authentication needed. Then the, you have Wi Wi Wi-Fi display. There is something about Aruba networks that they are sending some custom frames. It looks like they are used to uh, like manage the network. I haven't looked into that, but they are like pretty big frames. I I'm not sure what what they have. And again, there are many other information elements that you can look into it. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to uh, show a brief demo of, a, of an application I wrote. This application, this application is, not to be re, is not a replacement for the other tools you usually use. It's not a replacement for Kismet, for Aircrack, or for BetterCup. It's just a, a complement, OK? You can use it. This application is gonna parse all the frames that it finds with extra information with the protocols, and it will give you this information in a way you, you can later parse it and add it like to a report or, or maybe a plan for, for when you are doing a Wi-Fi pen test or something like that. So I will try to do a demo. It's not gonna be a live demo because before starting the talk, I check what devices they are here, and there are not so many devices with these protocols. But I, I give a, uh, I walk around the hotel le before the talk, and I have some captures that we can use as an example. But if you download the tool and you test it yourself, you will see that there's plenty of devices around us that they are using these protocols, and you can get a lot of information from them. So this tool I wrote uh, can receive a pickup file, or it can or it can read directly from the Wi-Fi car in monitor mode. Uh, it has only one active mode, that is the Wi-Fi direct mode, because again you have to send something to the to the to the device to get information. But all the other ones are in passive mode. So here I I only put a couple of devices so we can see what, what type of information we can get. In this case, the, this printer that maybe you have seen stuff like this, like direct, HP, Office, something, uh, they are printers. And as Wi-Fi Direct requires WPS to work, it's going to leak in two, in two different information elements. You're going to get information on the Wi-Fi Direct uh, information element and in the Wi-Fi Protected Setup information element. So in this case, we don't, we, don't, we don't get so much information. It's like the serial number is, is zero, the version, this is not model name, it's zero, so we are not getting too much information. We only get a little bit of information from the SSID, but if we go here, and we see here, the, this is the module of the HP printer vendor specific one, we can see that they are giving you like 
a US, USB connected. So we now that know that printer has a USB connected. Uh, we also know the model, the product SQ, the, the serial number, and this IP address here is the IP address of the, of the printer that is connected as a Wi-Fi station to an access point. So this printer is connected to a computer by, via USB, and it's also an access station connected to an access point. So if you connect to the printer and you, let's say you, have, you connect with Wi-Fi Direct and you exploit the printer and you get access to the printer as, let's say, root, it's not root but something more or less, and you get access to this, you will be able to maybe pivot to the USB device that is connected to the printer and maybe attack that, or you can get access to the local network. So maybe you have a really secure network, WP A3 with a really hard, hard different, difficult password, maybe you're using uh, any protection you want, but if your printer is gonna be the entry point, you, are in, you, you have uh, some trouble there. So again, all this information, they are sending it every single time into the air. You, you can do it uh, passively or actively. The HP printer is sending it like passively. It sends it in, a, in every beacon, they, they are sending this information. Then we have the CCS, the CCX here, Cisco Client Extension, and this is from a hotel nearby. And it says the access point name, it says how many clients are associated to this particular access point. Again, this information, public, you don't need even to interact with the access point, this is sent through there. Then we have, um, this one is an Apple TV. The Apple TV is giving a lot of information. Uh, here, the, the MAC address here is the random MAC address, and as we can see, this one. Here it says device ID, and this one is the real MAC address. So that's, that is not working as expected. Uh, and you also have the model, and here it says that it's an Apple TV, I think that is, this is uh, five generation, not really sure. But you can get, from this information, you can also know maybe the version they are running. And here you have an iPhone. Uh, I don't know what country code is this. Uh, because it's also leaking the, the country code of the device, how it's set to. And, and here, it has a MAC address. I'm not really sure what this MAC address is, but I'm gonna research into it. Maybe the iPhone is also re is leaking the, the, the real MAC address of the device. So if this is true, uh, iOS uh, has MAC address randomization broken. Uh, on iOS 9, that this, was, this was broken because they were giving the, the real MAC address inside the frame, but then after iOS, I think 10, they fix it, and I think this is a new, so I think they, they like put the bug inside ag again. I'm, I'm not really sure, but I have to look into it. So this was a, a, it's not a live demo, but if you want a live demo, now after doc, I can show you, I have another computer, this one doesn't work really good with my Wi-Fi uh, wi uh, card, but this is it. So any questions? No questions? No. Okay. One last thing I forget to say is, remember that every single custom protocol that is in the air is extending the attack surface of the device. If you have AirDrop, AirPlay, or any other uh, protocol, and there's a vulnerability for that protocol, you can get owned. So it's not about only leaking information. It's also about extending the attack surface and being able to find new vulnerabilities on the parsing code. So it's, it's, it's getting chaotic, the, the protocol. So again, we should look into it more 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 deeply